Hi, and welcome to another edition of World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and I felt really compelled to make another video on the voting ritual that's going on in the United States. Back in podcast 174, I explained that it's not just futile, but it's also dangerous to participate in this election. And as I see the racial division and what's happening in the United States right now, it's even more than that. Generally, what happens is you're given a choice between two bad candidates. I can remember back when South Park uh, framed it as being a choice between a douchebag and a shit sandwich. Well, that's what you always have in these elections. And I've heard it said that you're voting for the lesser of two evils. And that's always true. You'll always be voting for the lesser of two evils. But if you're voting for the lesser of two evils, you're still voting for evil. And that's going to take its toll for you in the natural law and, and the way your life turns out because you're responsible for these things, even though you may think you're not. So get your head out of the, elec the election and stop participating. Listen, there's not a chance it'll have any effect. Your vote will not have any effect. If you're a multi-billionaire and you can contribute to a campaign, if you're contributing to the wrong campaign, they'll take your, billionaire away, your billion dollars away. So it's not going to happen. Stalin said he doesn't care who votes or who they vote for. It's the person who counts the vote. And in the United States, you know, there's never been a supervised election. It's all done electronically. And the electronics, the electronic companies are owned by the GOP or the Democratic Party. It doesn't matter. I think the GOP mostly. But it doesn't really matter. It's all one party. Also, there's been a lot of high-ranking elite people. Uh, and one was in the uh, parliament. And they said... If voting changed anything, they'd make it illegal. So, so you're running against all this past history. And also, if you've been awake for a while and you look back at history, I mean, you can look back at all the controlled presidents. I mean, go back to Roosevelt. Roosevelt was so much under control that he did a false flag Pearl Harbor to get us into the war with Japan. Then if you move forward a little bit, there's Kennedy. Now, Kennedy was going to betray the power elites in some way. He was done away with. They took him out right away. There was no problem. And his brother was a candidate. They thought, we're not trusting that. So they took him out too. And then you get people in office like Bill Clinton. Now, Bill Clinton, uh, a no, he's a noted pedophile. He's a drug smuggler. Uh, he's married to a mass murderer. I mean, and he put in NAFTA. So they're all under control. I mean, Obama, for heaven's sakes, he's the great purveyor of change. He didn't change anything. Oh, uh, Guantanamo is still open. He did do Obamacare, which kind of ob obliterated health care in the United States. But you're not going to make a change. Get your head out of the election. The more effort you put into that, the more attention you give that. If you watch it on the mainstream media, it's polarizing you. Can't you see what it's doing to the country? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. If you listen to this broadcast, I'm sure you understand. But I want you to spread it around. Uh, get people to realize what's going on. If you follow this through to the logical conclusion, let's say Trump runs on one hand and Hillary runs on the other hand, they're going to polarize the country totally. So by the time the election's over or January starts, you're going to have one country that's totally ripped apart. It's going to be as diametrically opposed as the Muslims and the Europeans. So if you, you've got to get your head out of the election. And you know, we always talk about how can you disempower the system? What can you do to hurt the new world order? Well, you can get your head out of this election. When you, when you contribute, when you give energy to this, you're giving energy to them. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I just happened to see a little clip of a, of a video uh, last week, and, I, and it just got me motivated to again chime in on this election. Let's watch what I saw. Our band chumped, just like a lottery ticket, or just like Obama saying Obamacare was free. 
and I said it wasn't free, and then they said on MSNBC I was deeply racist and didn't show a damn thing I said. It's just like the stick they hold up and go, we're going to ridicule you if you don't submit. I want to be ridiculed by you lying trash mainstream media. You're on your last legs. We have 20 plus million viewers and listeners a week and growing. That's bigger than any show on cable. You people are legends in your own mind. And the only reason Donald Trump's so popular is because the media does attack him. I've got some issues with Trump. I'll tell you that right now. But the fact that they hate his guts and are pulling their hair out lets me know how good he is. And I shot a big report on this yesterday. I've now talked to seven different prominent people. Some of them over a year ago, and I, it all clicked. They say Trump knows way more than he's letting on. He's anti-New World Order before I was even on the air. Of course he's friends with him. Of course he says, no, Alex, he knows more than we do. He knows everything. He is chumping them. He, he knows how to manipulate them. He is coming in. He does not want to shut this country off. He, it came out. I, I heard about these meetings before it was in Politico. He met with 20 top Republicans in New York for lunch, and he said, I'm not killing this country. I'm not having Cloward and Piven. We're not going to shut the economy off and bankrupt it to make everybody dependent. I want wealth. I want prosperity. I'm not going to be part of this. And he went for a month to Scotland to basically meditate on it. He almost didn't do it. And his wife said, you've got to do it. And you know what Trump basically said? He said, I think the public's too dumb down to understand. I, they just, uh, can they handle the truth? He's going to bring out 9-11 truth. He's already done that. He's going to expose it all, folks. And, and if he is lying, who would set this up years ago telling prominent people that, you know, about all this stuff and, and, and that he knows the whole show? And then I was sitting there talking to Corsi, who I know he's an advisor to for years, and Corsi went ahead and sort of dumping the beans, going, look, Trump is chumping him. He knows more than you do or I do, Alex. He's got the whole thing down, he knows what they're doing, and he wants to be the guy to save America. Is that an egomaniac? Damn right. Do I completely trust him? No. Because if he can pull off this manipulation to have behind the scenes stuff for a year get to me, just to get me on board, then he's the devil. Wow, well I saw that and I thought, well, geez, this is really stoking the fires of a race war to try to get people to back Trump, which won't make any difference. Honestly, if you follow this through, Hillary, or, or Trump, they'll be in charge of a country that's completely torn apart. So it'll be easy for either of them to bring in the new world order. So let's get back to the clip. Uh, one of the first things he mentioned was Donald Trump's disclosure of 911. Well, Donald Trump wants to show that Saudi Arabia is involved with that because he's a son of Israel. Um, and He's not going to point to the Jews or the Mossad, even though there were Israeli agents there celebrating the knockdown of the of the uh, of the World Trade Center nine one one. Well, let's move along to another comment. He went to Scotland for a month to meditate on this. I don't know about you, but if I wanted to get away and think. I'd probably go to a uh, remote island, maybe Mozambique or somewhere, so I could be by myself. Why Scotland? The only thing that I know about Scotland it is it's the head of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. And so he went there. Now, I don't know whether he went to go to the sacred sites of the Scottish Freemasonry or meet with the Grand Poobah of Scottish Freemasonry, but it just seems like a strange thing to do before he totally puts both feet in this candidacy. But the one thing I really wanted to point out, at the end, he, he points to a man named Corsi, who is his inside informant on these uh, issues. Let me read a little article about an affiliation that this man has that you might be interested in. Here's an article I found on War is Crime. It's entitled, How the Big Brother Controls Alternative Media. And it's got some pictures here you might recognize. These are CNP members from left to right, top. Uh, Jack McLam, Dr. Stanley Monteith, Cliff Kincaid, Paul Craig Roberts. Now we're in the bottom row. Dr. Jerome Corsi, Larry Pratt, Dr. Michael Kaufman, and Bob Barr. Pictured above is just a few of the more popular names, especially among followers of the alternative media, who are members of the ultra-secret Council for National Policy, or the CNP. 
If you've never heard of this organization before, don't be surprised because it's almost never mentioned by the media and especially not by the big names in the alternative media who regularly feature CNP members as guests on their shows. Established in 1981 by Tim LaHaye, an evangelical minister, author, and speaker, the CNP was founded as a forum for conservative politicians, business leaders, and members of the media and evangelical leaders seeking to strengthen the political right in the United States. The group's initial funding was provided by Rockefeller Associated Nelson Bunker Hunt. Hunt and the Rockefeller family also played a leading role in the financing of the John Birch Society. Since 1981, the CMP has been meeting in secret three times a year to set the agenda for the conservative and evangelical movement in the U.S. Its meetings are held in undisclosed locations that are off limits to the general public and apparently the media as well. The reason for this, as claimed by the CMP, is to, quote, allow for a free-flowing exchange of ideas, end quote. A reason often used by powerful and secretive elite non-governmental agencies that work to set policy from behind the scenes and outside of the so-called, quote, democratic process. Because of the CMP secretive nature, some, including members of the CMP itself, have compared it to a slightly less secretive but more powerful Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR. The CNP is often viewed as the right wing's version of the Eastern Liberal Establishment CFR. Though when looking through the group's roster, it doesn't take long to find many names which are, were, also members of the CFR. Surely, anyone who has done their homework knows that the left versus right argument is a ruse and that whether somebody in a position of power claims to be a liberal or a conservative, they're still knowingly or unknowingly working toward the furtherance of the globalist one world agenda. Some have said that the CNP is even more powerful than the CFR. I find this hard to believe because the CFR is part of the global network and simply the American branch of the British based Royal Institute for International Affairs, which has satellites in all the Commonwealth countries. Now, I can tell you one thing, that RIIA, the Royal Institute for International Affairs, is really powerful. If you read any of John, uh, Dr. John Coleman's books on the Committee of 300 or Tavistock, they're always going back and checking things out by the Royal Institute of International Affairs. It's very powerful. Let me continue reading. While there are no Doubt, very powerful names involved in the CNP, and it receives its funding from some very dubious sources. It more than likely works under the auspices of the CFR and serves more of a dialectical role in the left-right para paradigm, formulating propaganda for the, quote, Christian right, versus serving as globalist policymakers, which truly do control both sides of the political game and have a global influence. The group may be able to get away with their secrecy because they do it, in fact, exercise less power and influence than the more widely known groups wielding glo global power. And that's like the CFR, the trilateral, the Bilderberg group. Let's get down and look at some names uh, on the CNP list. We've got Tom DeLay, Rudy Giuliani, if you can't trust him, who can you trust? Now, Oliver North, now he's a convicted criminal. Eric Prince, John Hagee, Trent Lott, Richard Mellon Scaffey, uh, Senator John McCain, of course, Dick Armey, Alan Keyes, John Bolton, Ed Fuelner, Steve Forbes, Chuck Missler, uh, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumfield, uh, Mark Sanford, Alberto, Alberto Gonzalez, Jack Abernoff, there you go, Pat Robertson, Jesse Helms, Dr. Edward Teller, and Paul uh, Weyrich, and Jack Kemp. 
It appears that the CNP is so closely connected to the supposedly anti-communist, anti-New World Order John Birch Society, several of the CNP's original members, such as Nelson Bunker Hunt, contributed large sums of monies to the JBS, which was initially provided funding from people such as Nelson Rockefeller. Another example of how the elite control all sides and administer the opposition to these sides they create. Several of the CNP's high-ranking members also belong to the Masonic Knights of Malta. What else do you need? And are associated with the Fabian Socialism and the Eugenics Movement. Oil Baron and CNP member Nelson Bunker Health was Hunt was a former member of the racist pro-eugenics group called the International Association for the Advancement of uh, Euthology and Eugenics. The group was heavily involved with the promotion of eugenics and segregation. So you got this uh, pro-eugenics, uh, racist pro-eugenics group on one side, and then financing the other side is the, K the Democratic Party's <laughs> KKK creation. Uh, let's move along. Well, that's your source. And it's been promoted by the mainstream media that there's a battle between Trump and Hillary. Um, let's just discard Bernie. Trump and Hillary. And that's going to divide the country. And the elites are worried about Trump because, of course, the elites are totally powerless against Trump. How, how could they be totally powerless against Trump? Don't you remember this clip? I don't know whether you remember this film or, or Alex remembers this film. This is the flat-out assassination of a sitting president um, by the cabal. Uh, and if you can remember, there he is. If you can remember, his brother also was a candidate for president when he was assassinated also by this same group. And then Alex and the other elites might forget that they have this option, too. This is a report on the gun that can deliver a fatal cancer or an immediate heart attack. And I can tell uh, this took place in the 70s because uh, you have Barry Goldwater is one of the senators reviewing this. Do you remember this? Also, I had to find one time they wanted me to find um, to find out if there was such a thing as a um, as a poison that was undetectable, especially one that seemed to uh, mimic a heart attack that would kill someone, but it would it appear that they had a heart attack. I did find such a thing. Does this pistol uh, fire the dart? Yes, it does, Mr. Chairman, and a special one was developed which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. The, the poison was frozen into some sort of dart and then it was shot at uh, very high speed into the person. So at, when it reached the person, it would melt inside them. And the only thing would be like one little tiny red dot on their body, which was hard to detect. There wouldn't be a needle left or anything like that in the person. But also the toxin itself would not appear in the autopsy? Yes, so that uh, there was no, no way of perceiving that the, uh, the target was hit. Uh, Jerome Corsi and also Alex might have, and the other elites might have forgotten that they just knocked off Judge, Judge Scalia, probably with that same gun. Now, I have not been able to relocate the references, but I did see a reference where Scalia did have a small hole above his heart. It could have been made by that gun. Of course, we'll never know because there was never any autopsy. Now to address... Uh, the association between Trump and Soros and the New World Order. Let's turn to a quick video by Luke Rutkowski. Coming off major significant victories in last night's Republican primaries, it looks like Donald J. Trump is set to be the Republican nominee for the 2016 presidential election. But in this video, I wanted to talk about all the rumors, all the speculation that has been going around with Donald Trump's involvement with secret societies. In this video, we're going to go over some of the latest news and give you a full picture of just how secret societies really do pull the strings behind closed doors. Now, Newt Gingrich recently on Fox News, when asked why the Republican establishment is not endorsing Donald J. Trump, he had this to say. Donald Trump 
becoming the leader of the party, and it absolutely drives them crazy. They just cannot imagine sharing, well, because he's an outsider. He's not them. He's not part of the club. He's uncontrollable. You know, he hasn't been through the initiation rites. He didn't belong to the secret society. He doesn't belong in the secret societies. He hasn't been through the initiation rituals. Well, Newt Gingrich is pretty much an expert on secret society since he is a part of Bohemian Grove, a secret society that meets once a year outside of San Francisco, where they have mock child sacrifices, where they wear robes like Emperor Palpatine, ship in male prostitutes, and pretty much concede and give all their power to the Dark Force. This sounds like just an insane conspiracy theory, but we tried to get clarity from Newt Gingrich, since there's photos of him there at the yearbook, what actually happens there. Legitimate questions, what happens at this secret society where the most powerful people in entertainment, in media, in banking, in the corporate world, and in government meet secretly once a year and do all this crazy, weird, satanic rituals? Obviously, Newt Gingrich is an expert, and he has come out and said Donald Trump is not a part of these secret societies. He has not been a part of the rituals, the initiation rituals, which obviously allow politicians to have dirt on each other and trust each other in a circle. That's how power works. That's why they do all these weird satanic things. They, they, just some of the weird stuff that secret societies, that the most powerful people in society are involved in, they do the weirdest, craziest stuff in order to have dirt on each other, in order to protect each other, to make sure there's a bond of secrecy with each other. Now, of course, New Gingrich just came out. We have people within the CFR also attacking uh, Donald Trump. It looks like Donald Trump is not a part of any secret society or has any connection to them, right? Well, no, 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 no. We have Roger Stone, former Trump advisor, saying that New Gingrich would actually be a great VP candidate for Donald Trump. We also have Donald Trump coming out and saying that he really respects and he gets his advice from Richard Haas. Now, who is Richard Haas? Richard Haas is the president of the Council on Foreign Relations. He is a well-known Bilderberg member. He has served George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush when they were in power. And according to Richard Haas' spokesperson, Richard Haas briefed Trump on foreign policy in August of 2015. And now Trump is saying on national television that he really respects Richard Haas, that he gets his advice from this man, who is the president of the Council on Foreign Relations, which many people say is the nation's most influential foreign policy think tank group in the United States. This is what Dick Cheney had to say about this quasi-secret society. So on foreign relations is a deep mention that I've been a member for a long time and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. <laughs> Obviously, keeping it secret that he was a large proponent of the Council on Foreign Relations. The Council on Foreign Relations was actually started in 1921 by Warburg, by J.P. Morgan, by Rockefeller as a front group to get more power and control to establish a new world order. And according to their very own members, like Richard Gardner, he said, and I quote, the new world order will have to be built from the bottom up rather than from the top down. But in the end run around national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece will accomplish much more than an old fashioned frontal assault. The main goal of the Council on Foreign Relations is a front group for all the bankers, for the real people behind the scenes who are pulling the strings to push their globalist agenda of full power, of full control over you. Harper's even said, that the most powerful clique in these CFR groups has one objective in common. They want to bring around the surrender of sovereignty and the national independence of the United States. They want to end national boundaries and racial and ethnic loyalties, supposedly to increase business and ensure world peace. What they strive for would inevitably lead to dictatorship and loss of freedom by the people. The CFR was founded for the purpose of promoting this armament and submergence of United States sovereignty and national independence into an all-powerful one world government. And that's exactly what Richard Haas, in his own words, is saying in his own publications. Richard Haas said this, states must be prepared to cede some sovereignty to world bodies. Globalization thus implies that sovereignty is not only becoming weaker in reality, but that it needs to become weaker. You could see this this article by Richard Haas is going to be in the description below. 
ultimately calling for the destruction of American freedom, of American sovereignty, in order to have a globalist banking corporate one world government, which is the pure agenda of these globalists, these secret societies, and Donald Trump is capitulating, going on national television, saying that, yes, Richard Haas advises me. He is well respected. His advisor is saying that Newt Gingrich would make a great VP candidate. And he also said that John Bolton, the former ambassador to the United States under George W. Bush, the former war criminal who helped get us into war with Iraq, is also just great on foreign policy. This is who Donald Trump is being advised in, and that's why maybe you're seeing him flip-flop so much. That's why you're seeing him saying that, yeah, we should torture people, we should kill the families of terrorists, and then flip-flopping and saying, no, we probably shouldn't do that, and now he's back again just two hours ago, Trump on torture, we have to beat the savages. Obviously, secret societies have a lot of control within our world. They are a major force to be reckoned with, and with Donald Trump coming up, looking like he will be the nominee for the Republicans in 2016, you could see the power play happening behind the scenes. But the very fact that one of his former advisors says that Newt Gingrich would be a great VP, the very fact that he worships and respects Richard Haas, the very fact that he considers a war criminal like John Bolton a part of his national security team is extremely worrisome to say the least because all these men are interconnected with the Bohemian Grove, with the Council on Foreign Relations, with the Bilderberg Group, the establishment behind the scenes that really pulls the strings in this world. And we're seeing it proven to us with their very own statements. Now, the way the media is, portray is portraying this battle, it's like George Soros good, Donald Trump bad, or Donald Trump bad, George Soros good. They're both creeps. They're both billionaires. You don't get to be or stay a billionaire, maybe a millionaire because it's not that much nowadays, but you don't get to be a billionaire or, or keep your billions if you're not playing, playing ball. Now, this I found in a conservative review. I, I really didn't do much research on this. This just pops out. Trump pals around with George Soros. He's got a picture of uh, very, photo, very, very photogenic George Soros there. Not only has Trump funded open border politicians like Schumer, Durbin, McCain, Graham, and Menendez, but he also has been bailed out by George Soros. Trump actually spent Christmas Eve with George Soros in 2009, according to the New York Post. But they, billionaires, got to stick together, you know. Never mind that Soros is for a one world order and an anti an anti Zionist and an anti constitutional funder of all things unholy. The founder of all things unholy also funded the Trump Tower in Chicago, according to the Chicago Tribune. Trump has lined up three New York hedge funds, including money from billionaire George Soros to invest one hundred and sixty million in his Chicago skyscraper, a piece in perhaps the largest construction financing in the city's history, according to real estate sources and public documents. Soros gave Trump a mezzanine loan, which is basically a bailout because Trump didn't want to or couldn't front his own money to build the Chicago Trump Tower. So I don't think they're opposed to one another. I think they're absolutely on the same side. And to say that Soros is anti-Zionist uh, is absolutely, totally ridiculous. Let's move along and look at a little clip from Spyro. We have been witnessing the planned implosion, the destruction of the United States for some time now. They've been using the U.S. military might as a tool of conquest around the world. They've been using the petrodollar as a tool of debt-based enslavement that they can impose on other countries that, of course, is backed by the U.S. military. I believe that we are witnessing the final approach of this planned implosion of the U.S. Now, it's getting to the point to where they have been stirring up racial division, any kind of unrest that they can, the divide-and-conquer tactic is in full swing, backed by the mainstream media and the propagandists to form and manipulate your perception of reality. 
Now, the Chicago Trump rally was canceled due to security concerns in regards to the protesters that plan to take over the rally and rush the stage. And of course, Trump blames Bernie Sanders supporters for that unrest. But the rabbit hole goes much deeper than that, and it has ties and connections all the way up to the White House and beyond. This is such a huge story because it is leading up to a climactic point, a breaking point to where things are coming to a head. Well, it appears that Donald Trump was on the money when he accuses Bernie Sanders for his involvement in the Chicago political mayhem. But it goes much deeper than that. The left-wing political action internet-based group called MoveOn.org helped organize and set up the whole thing. As you can see here, People for Bernie tweeted out, Remember, the Trump rally wasn't just luck. It took organizers from dozens of organizations and thousands of people to pull it off. MoveOn.org also endorsed Obama back in 2008, of course, and George Soros has his hands all over this. Not only did he fund $33 million to Black Lives Matter, as you can see here, financial contributors include George Soros and his wife, Susan Weber Soros, who gave millions of dollars to get MoveOn.org up and running. This is exactly what they want. They want chaos. They want division. The whole divide and conquer tactic taking place, we're witnessing right now. They are dividing this country, us against us. We will never see where the real threat comes from, and that is up above, sitting on top of all of us, playing us all off against each other. Now, it appears that the events that took place in Baltimore and Ferguson was just the beta test at this point in time, and rallying the troops, a dry run, kind of a thing. And I expect to see a lot more of those events take place. And they're going to be gearing this more politically and taking this to this campaign, to the presidential campaigns. They are using our colleges and our universities as recruiting centers, indoctrination, re-education centers. And Soros has invested himself deeply into this whole program. We are seeing the takeover from within now, I'm not endorsing any one of these candidates. I feel that this whole thing is sort of one big puppet show, a fake reality TV show, so to speak. They're presenting you with the illusion of choice. You get to choose between their hand-picked candidates. Now, Donald Trump prides himself on being a businessman, a self-made billionaire who's not accepting a dime from anyone on his campaign contributions, saying that he cannot be bought. And I respect that. I can, I can see that. But... Then again, you see stuff like this here, and Donald Trump accepted a $160 million loan from George Soros and New York hedge funds to build his Chicago skyscraper. So, yes, it appears that Soros has his hands in everything. Everything. Even the man that so many people hold so much hope in. Well, personally, I think that Spiro is right on target. It's just a puppet show. And it's a puppet show designed to rip your nation apart. Let's not allow this to happen. Don't get involved with this election. It's not going to matter. If the puppet on the left hand, which is Hillary wins, or the puppet on the right hand, which is Trump wins, they're going to take over a divided country that's going to need international assistance. Uh, you're going to need the UN blue hats to come in and run your country. Really, you've got to pull yourself out of this election. And I know that people who watch the World Beyond Belief know this. So try to get this video out to other people. Maybe I can make an appeal to have them get out of this involvement. Turn off the mainstream media. Turn off the mainstream alternative media. Do research for yourself. Learn about this. This is such an obvious, it's almost like a false flag. It's a false election. It's a false choice. It's always a false choice. And the choice, and when you vote for the lesser of two evil, you're voting for evil. And you don't want to have that on your record. Okay, that's all for me right now. Thank you and God bless you.